Lorenzo doing his thing through three games this season. There are the numbers. And I remember Carlos and Dero last year. He went to the Bronx and it was automatic. He took a Nick Pavetta fastball over the weekend and just roped it. How is he able to be so consistent? What do you see from him at the plate? All right, let's dive in, Carlos. Yeah, let's do it. Left-handed power hit in first baseman. This is right up your alley. I'm all over it. I'm all over it. I've had so much fun watching him over the years, you know, and he has been so consistent. And one of the things that I want to point out is the fact that maybe his style is unorthodox, all right, but it does work. First of all, he stands on top of the plate. That pitch right there is out of the plate, maybe in the outer part yeah. of the strike zone, yet to him, because of where he stands on the plate, it's like middle-middle. Right, middle, middle, and he's able to hit that ball out of the park. Beautiful swing, keep the swing level. Now, this one in particular, it's way inside, and he got to it. So you're like, okay, why are you going to be on top of the plate? You're going to have trouble. And let's pause it right here at contact. He's like, you're going to have trouble getting to the inside pitch. Look where his foot is. It's almost on the line, right? This pitch is middle in, slightly elevated, and he still gets to it. So you know what we talk about? hunting and tunnels and yeah. what he's looking for he has to clear he has to load early enough to be able to get to this pitch and that frees him up so let's go ahead and play it good thing is look how he keeps that ball fair it doesn't hook he doesn't hit a I lot of top spinners right and if you could go back maybe let me help you here uh, to to illustrate one more point that it is unorthodox look at he steps into the bucket now People say never step into the bucket. You're pulling off. Well, yeah, in the bottom here, let's go to his stride. So right? clearing his hips. He clears his hips. His shoulders are still in. Where? Right? Now look how flat that swing comes to the zone, how direct to the ball it is. Let's play it. Mm. Boom. Yeah. Home run. Now that ball traveled a long way. Let's go ahead. Let's let it play. Let's have fun a little bit. Watch him trot the you know around the bases. But that is a, a beautiful, easy swing because he gives himself enough time to get there. Now, if you leave out something out over the plate, you know what? It's almost middle middle to him. So he's taken away the effect of the outer part. But that's the difference. But uh, <laughs> come this, on, this is where you gotta love it, right? You're like, wait, if he's stepping in the bucket. He can't hit the ball the other way, right? Wrong. Think again. So if we go back to this swing right here, he is, I know this is on the way, but he is stepping into the bucket or slightly open, but it actually helps him to go the other way. He's hitting that pitch off his back leg because of the angle he's creating. Let's go ahead and play it. And that bat comes extremely flat through the zone. And he hits an absolute missile the other way. I'm going to show you a few of these. That one was very impressive. Stepping into the bucket still, stepping slightly open. And he's really good at hitting the ball on the line to left field. He's, that, got, he's got a two-strike approach. It's in that ability to short up against tough ABs. Look, left on left. Oh, I, I like that. I li let's go back. Let's look at that swing. Because you're like, okay, he's stepping into the bucket. He's stepping slightly open. How is he going to hit the ball the other way? It actually helps him hit the other the way. Let me point this out. He's not hitting around his front side. If you remember this, you remember playing Pepper, yeah. right? You didn't play. I didn't play Pepper like this. You know, the pitcher's coming this way. So I didn't play Pepper like that. I used to get slightly open, and I became a, a better Pepper player. <laughs> Catch the ball with the bat. Right? right? You're like hitting it back here. Now, think about Rizzo's approach. Slightly open. He's almost playing pepper with those balls. Let's play. And he's hitting bullets the other way. And then if he gets the pitch middle in, he's able to do that. Even when he gets beat, he's able to hit. Look at this. This, this uh, angle here is beautiful. He's able to let the ball travel. And even when he gets jammed, d -Row, he's still able to hit the ball and move it on the right trajectory. He can hit, man. You can't shift him. He could always hit. I saw him coming up when I was damaged goods with the Giants rehab assignment. He was coming up through the minor leagues. He was best player on the field. Look at the spray chart. Okay. So for anyone at home, you know, looking at this, you know, that thought process of I need to dive or strike towards left field to hit the ball the opposite way, that actually makes you top spin balls to the pool side. This approach is actually more effective because you're creating the right angles. All these orange ones here. Those are singles the other way. 
he he has a lot of them. He's spraying it all over the place. Now, yes, his power, you see the home runs, the pink, those are home runs. So he's really blasting balls. On the pool side, I got a fast few over here, so don't sleep Oppos. on his opposite field power. You know, a, a couple of doubles this way as well. So he's got power to all fields. But think about it, it's a foolproof approach. approach. You get ready early enough to pull for home runs and hit for power, and if for some reason you get beat, you're still, because of your setup and the angle you create, you're still hitting for average, hitting bullets the other way. It's a foolproof ap approach when he, his timing is right. You know, when he gets in trouble, it's when he's off time. Yeah, and I feel, Carlos, I don't say this lightly, especially growing up around here, I feel like those pinstripes can weigh heavy on some guys. There's some guys who can wear them and some guys who can't. Yeah. And they'll expose themselves eventually on this roster as well, too. But he just looks at home in that uniform. Looks comfortable. Big ABs against the Red Sox. Seems to always want to come through. Slow heartbeat. So, yeah, he's a special player. On the, on the flip side, okay, I'm going to make an argument that this dude, oh. Ben Wright. Oh, yes. The numbers justify that he's on pace over the last year and the start to this season with guys like Mike Trout, Tatis Jr., some of the best players in the game. And yeah. he is like baby boy all grows up now. I mean, he is on full display. This year he gets the seven for $100 million and people are like, well, can he stay healthy? What's the deal? I don't know if Minnesota should have backed it up for him like that. He's got to prove it. Time out. Is he doing something different now? Because if he's healthy, the number says he's one of the best players in the game. Okay? So when he first came up, he left a lot to be desired. He did. He yeah. was a high pick, second overall, supposed to shock the world. Look at the on-base percentage between 15 and 18. Okay? 285. That is not getting yeah. it done. OPS plus less than 100. Not getting it done. Take a look at him now. Yeah. Take a look at the slug. Good boy. Yeah, this, this is huge Major improvement. League Baseball in slug. Second in OPS, minimum 250 plate appearances. He has been so on fire. Dive in on this. Stats since 2021 per oh. 162 games. His last buck, 62. We're talking about 304, 56. <laughs> Come <laughs> on. Come on, man. Read the bottom line. <laughs> Last 11 plus war plus season by a position player, Barry, was Barry Bonds. Bonds. Insane. Okay, so he has to be doing something different at the plate. So let's dive in a little bit to what he's doing different at the plate. Because when he first came up, and we'll get into it, he was a little wide open. He had a leg kick. He was searching, searching for athleticism, searching for confidence. Now, what has he done? He has decided, I am getting on the gas. This is a velocity-type game, and I have to start off the heater, period. And I have to smother the fastball. And you can see, back in the day, when he first came up, 15 through 18, fastballs, 239, a 409 slug. 2021, 2022 fastballs, he's hitting 326, and he's got a 764 <laughs> slug off Man. the heater. Ready. Which, Leads all of baseball, and by the way, breaking balls, he's fourth, okay? Can we talk about that? Come on, go. Well, because you're talking about fastballs, yeah. right? Yeah. They're like, oh, he's hitting breaking balls as well. When you get ready for the fastball, yep. and there is no rush in your swing, you, you don't feel rushed, you don't feel, you don't never have to hit that panic button, you become a better off-speed hitter, off-speed pitch hitter, because there's no rush. You are able to see and discern. Yeah. Someone hangs something, you bang it. And you're able to recognize pitches because you're not diving and crashing and you're not pop committing on one thing. No. Okay, so let's bring up a try screen, Kapals. Let's take a look. Look at this. Just let it sink in. It's a game of tinkering, it's a game of evolution, different styles of hitting. There's not one way. He's proven that. He comes up to the big leagues as this defensive wizard flies, occasional pop. He's wide open. He's got a little crouch. Look at him in 22. I mean, even closed up a little bit more, but on his inside of his back knee, he's back, but even his feet are a little mm -hmm. closed up even more. And I believe, I believe, okay, 
And I know there's Ricky Hendersons, there's Rod Carews, there's a lot of guys over the history of the game that have gotten into a crouch and been really successful. Tony Gwynn, you're at your most, most athletic when you're standing as tall and natural as you can possibly be. And he has kind of leaned going that way. And then he eliminates this leg kick now. Now he's just short yeah. to the baseball, staying back and almost doing this like baby toe tap and hitting from, I mean, his backside. Check out these three home runs over the weekend versus Seattle. This one? Get oh, out of what? 101? Run that back. Please. <laughs> what? I didn't, I didn't it's even... a buck one at the top of the zone. <laughs> So he's ready for the fastball, and he's starting from the top down, Watch which is land. that's what you do. Let's go. Let's go. Play. Seriously, he looks like Blade too in the box. Oh, <laughs> Blade! <laughs> Ugh, he's Wesley Snipes. <laughs> yep. Hundred and one. He's confident. Oh, Carlos Correa is going to help him too. Mm. Oh, 89 for Marco Gonzalez. Little like cutter. Nope. Oh. The, okay. Hey. Seriously. This, this, uh, it, it, it's Somebody's a very superstar. telling. Well, you saw, it's very telling. You see the 101 at the top of the zone, and he was ready to hit it. And not at the top of the zone. It was actually out of the zone, the pressure zone, and he was still able to get the barrel to it. You have to work from the top down. This is exactly what he showed us there. And then, what, that little cutter inside is nothing for him. As soon as he saw that curveball pop, he saw it, crushed it. I'm excited you about it. You were ahead of your time. I wish I would have dove in. I, was, I left a lot on the table. How many stances did Robert, you have? I had one stance my whole life. He just willed it. <laughs> Carlos, it's almost like he needs an award or something. Yes. I'm going to give him an award. Okay. Three placatas. He gets the placata king of the weekend. weekend. He gets the placata king of All the right. week award. You know how, you know, Roflo has the hand yeah. award? Well, it's the pitch hand. It's not uh, just it's the, not the hand. hand. The hand award. Oh, the, the hand award. I want to I wanna have, you know, I'm going to give him the Placada award. Excuse the Placada me. King. Give okay. your own segment. I like it, Carlos. We start that going. Again, Carlos, yeah. not to belabor the point, the award is the pitch hand, not the hand. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, there we go. All right, coming up, Luke Boyd, of course, has a new home in San Diego.